Hello, stamping friends. This is Jenny from Celebrate the Journey. It's Wednesday night, and I have a card for you tonight. So let's see if I can see who's on and any comments. I've been talking to myself for a minute or two. I forgot that our Wi-Fi dropped in the middle of the night, and I have not reconnected my phone. So I had to start all over again. So I think it's working now. Um, I use an older phone for my Facebook Lives, so I don't always check to see if it's online. So we're going to use a couple different products tonight. The first one being the Queen Bee stamp set and bundle, stamps and dies. It's in the new mini catalog. And um, if you know anybody that's a beekeeper or really likes bees, maybe bees are part of their... You know, they might collect pictures of bees. You know, it's one of those things that people really love. This might be a stamp for them. And, of course, we um, will use some other products. Do you see this little stamp here that looks like words and splatters and all of that? Well, I thought that definitely went with the time-worn type. It's not the... Um, because it's words and splatters. So we're going to use that embossing folder. I have quite a bit of this paper, the gingham uh, paper left over from some a class that I had. And I thought, well, I think we can use this paper to make some really pretty cards um, using these colors. Probably not the red. I, I don't think... I could use the red, but I'm going to use the softer, uh, subtle colors. And because I have so much of this, I thought I'd make, oh, quite a few of these for birthday cards. So I'm going to make it easier to reproduce them using the Stamparatus. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So let me put that paper to the side. And I almost forgot one other thing we're going to, I'm going to share with you later. Uh, let's see, we got the stamps, we've got the dies, we've got the stamparatus. So what I did is I took a piece, I'm going to put this to the side, I don't need it right now. I took a piece of gray, basic gray, gray granite, I'm not real sure what color. And I made a template. So then I cut out my bee, queen bee. I lined her up on there. And now I can stamp over and over and over and get a good coverage with my stamping because you can, you know, do it two or three times. So the card we're going to use do today is going to use this balmy blue check. So I want my B to have just a tiny bit of balmy blue on him. And so I'm going to use one of the new mini blending brushes. Hi Kay. Oh, thanks for joining us and thanks for sharing tonight. So we're going to take the, one of the minis, mini brushes or small, I don't know what they call them, minis. And we're just going to give it a little bit of blue. Now I could do this after I stamped it, but I when I tried that, it kind of smeared and picked up some black. And I didn't, I didn't like that, so I wanted wanted it to be clean and bright, not smeary looking. Now, if we mess up, we'll do another one, but hopefully we won't mess up. And um, the good thing is, is this is just paper. And if I'm, if you could see my trash can, it's always full of paper scraps, trash mistakes, creative mistakes. And 
I don't usually feel too bad about it. So, um, because we all make mistakes. So now we'll just ink this up with our memento. Try to get it as good as we can. And, and I have my handy dandy eraser to give us some pressure. This is just a um, dry erase eraser so it won't scratch. Um, it's got a little place there it doesn't want to ink up. I saw where somebody else um, suggested using an air hockey puck or air hockey game thing. It's like a knob and it's, I don't play air hockey, but I think it would work because it's got a knob for you to hold. So if you know anybody that has an air hockey game, it would give you the, or you could always look for that at Goodwill or there we go. It took a little extra pressure and I think that B looks fine. So we'll pick that up out of there. Oh, one other thing I was going to say um, that we were using. Did you see that little heart? We're going to use the heart pearls. We could use sparkly pearls or uh, rhinestones, but I thought the hearts would go real pretty with this card. So we've got our bee ready. We'll put her up here. We need to run this through the embossing folder. And actually, let's see, this is three and a half, I think. Let me double check for you. Mm -hmm. By four and a half. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. I mean, this is three and a half by five and a half. It's the whole length of the card. And we'll run this through. Using our gray plate. because we'll need them in a minute. Let's see, where's our card base? We just have a standard card base. We'll add this. It's going to cover up the entire card front. Oh, yay, Cherie, I'm glad your order came. What was it you were waiting on? I can't remember. It was what we used the other day. I don't remember what that was. Hello, you know, these days just go by too fast for me. Now, if you wanted to put a little extra border here, you could. I wanted to make sure we saw all the DSP that we could. And I wanted to keep this card simple. You know, I'm always, I like simple better. I will occasionally do some fancy things. But there is a um, up and down on this embossing folder. So look at some of those words. I don't know that anybody would notice it if you had it upside down, but just in case. Now we're going to put our low B in the center, and then we're going to surround her with some foliage. So I picked, since these are soft colors, 
my hands are shaking tonight. I'm going to use soft sea foam and I can cut two at the same time. And I thought we'd put a little piece on the inside, so we'll cut that. Well, this is a little detailed. You can cut two at a time as long as you run it through, you know, forwards and backwards about twice to make sure it cuts good. Oh, Sentimental Park. That's a good one. I think you'll like it. I love the dies that go with that one. So here's our foliage. Oop, I need to be careful and not tear it up. And we've got our little extra pieces. I'll save those to use on my next card. And we need to get these out of here, so we'll use the Take Your Pick tool. It's got holes there that will loosen the cardstock so you won't tear it, hopefully, when you pull it out. There. Now, the other thing, I want to make sure I have room for my sentiment. I'm just going to do happy birthday. <laughs> and we're going to see if I can stamp on that tiny little piece of paper. And I just pulled happy birthday. And I'm not sure what scent this is from because it was on my desk. That's not very good. That's why I have more. Sometimes it takes about three tries. That one's pretty good. Then we'll trim the ends on that. I'm just going to do a little angle. Nothing too fancy. And we're going to put that right about there. So, see, we just need to have, have everything lined up before we glue it down. It's hard to undo it. You can, you know, you can take your heat gun and warm up your adhesive and it will... let you take things apart, but I think they still look like you kind of took them apart. <laughs> now we can bring her down. Isn't that going to be sweet? I think we're ready to put that, all these little things, and then we'll finish her off. I've seen a bazillion cards made with this set but using the yellows, and then we've seen some with some really bright colors like reds and blues and orchid, but I don't think I've seen them pastels, so being able to use up this DSP was my goal. Add a little bit, a few dots here and there. Sorry. Let me to hold this down. We'll go ahead and put, I am not going to put this on the dimensionals. I'm just going to adhere it.
I'll try to figure out where this happy birthday came from after the video. And we're going to put her on with some dimensionals. Now, there's another die that we're going to use, and it's these wings. So we're going to cut those out of vellum. Boy, those little um, pieces just pop right out. And last but not least, we have some pretty little flowers. Look like a dogwood almost. A big one and a small one. And we're going to cut those out of balmy blue. This one carries over to the next catalog because I have lots of ideas for it. What would you like to see in the new catalog? It's hard. We can't believe we're already looking ahead to May, but time just marches by. All right, so now we can put these. We're going to use a glue dot on the wings. I think we'll use a glue dot on the flowers, too. That'll make it easy. And so I'm going to put the larger flower at the top. And the smaller flower down at the bottom. Now we need our hearts. If you'll notice, some of these hearts are larger and smaller. So I'll put the large one on the B. And the smaller ones on the little flowers. Isn't that nice and sweet? I just love it. Now for the inside, I picked um, this wishing you every happiness this special day will bring. And this is from Peaceful Moments, the one that went with the poppies. Um, it's some of my favorite sentiments. I like the mix of script and block and they're nice and bold. So let's hope we can stamp that without messing up. If we mess up, we'll just put another piece of paper over it. That happens. Especially when not today when my hands have been shaky. And there's a look at that sweet little bee. She's got a little flower on her. We're gonna put her on there.
and now I've got a piece of the blue and then we we cut a piece of that while we were cutting the other foliage isn't it pretty I love the soft colors thank you Kay and Cherie um it's a different take on what what we would expect with all the yellow and black. It could even be a sweet um, welcome baby card, kind of. Welcome, welcome to the hive. And there's our card. That came out pretty, didn't it? Look at that. So this is called Queen Bee. It has the dies and the stamps that match. So speaking of the gold and black, I do have something else to share with you. I made this the other day. It's not perfect, but you know, nothing I make is perfect. So not too long ago when I was at the Dollar Tree, I found this frame. It's plastic. It was a dollar. This was before things were dollar twenty-five, and I got it because I thought, my goodness, I think we can use. I could use it for something. So I used the piece that came in it to create a template, and then I measured an inch in and cut another hexagon and another inch in and cut another one, and then. I heat embossed the B in black. I added these little flowers. I see that one's not glued down because I see there's another one under it. I must not have realized that I had that many flowers on there. And this time I just used the regular pearls. And I colored those yellow, but I left the one on the B white. And then the honeycomb I used, Daffodil Delight, the rest of it's so saffron. I think that'll look pretty on my desk for a while, and I'll enjoy looking at it. And I just used all the stamps and kind of collage stamped it. That came out cute, especially for a dollar. You know, I always look at the frames at the Dollar Tree um, because I can usually come up with an idea of somehow to use them. See, it's a little wonky here, but I'm not going to let that bother me. So we've got a, a little art piece and a card. Now don't forget, if you want to place an order this week, I will send you the kit to make these cards. And I've already cut up some for some people that have placed an order. So you'll get yours pretty quick, too, if you place an order. And I'll be back next week. Or, oh, no, I'll be back Saturday. Join us on Crazy Crafters. We're going to start at 10 Eastern Time. So wherever you live, do the math. Um, we'll be on at 10 and 11 and then one and two. We'll give you a lunch break and then come back. So Saturday, look for us on Crazy Crafters and uh, it's all celebration products. Thanks for joining me tonight. Bye.